Hey guys, Miss Gosling here. In this video, you are going to learn about how to solve three body problems for electrostatic forces. So with no further ado, here is the three body problem two electric boogaloo. By the end of this video, you'll be able to determine the net electrostatic force on charged objects. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I need to think about is vector addition in electric fields. And by that, I mean, when we are adding up the net and to uh, adding up the individual forces acting on an object to find our net force, it's important that I'm very careful about the directions of each force. So let's go ahead and take a look and find the net force about how we find the net force on this guy, the middle of my three charges. So let's start by looking at what the force is, what the force of my left charge is on my center charge. So since these two charges are repelling each other because they are like charges, the left charge is going to make my center charge move to the right. And so the direction of the force on the middle charge due to the charge on the left is rightwards. Now let's look at the charge on the right. So this is a positive charge, while my central charge is negative. That means that my negative charge is going to be attracted to my positive charge and will therefore experiencing, experience a rightwards force as well. So when I'm calculating the net force on that, on that, um, electro, on that charge, my char I'm going to add the two individual forces together. In, let, so that's the central charge. Let's take a moment as well to look at the leftmost charge and contrast that. So for my leftmost charge, the middle charge is going to make my left charge go to the left because the force between my two negative charges is, of course, repulsive. And repel repelling the left charge means it'll be pushed to the left away from the central charge. For my positive charge, on the other hand, the force is going to be to the right because that positive charge is going to attract my negative charge towards it. And so when I find my net force, I'm going to subtract F1 from F2. Um, or in this case, the red force from the blue force. Versus my central charge when again I was adding F1 and F2 together. Because their directions point both in the positive direction. So now you've, we've talked about it theoretically, let's go ahead and look at an example. Let's go ahead and calculate the force on the central charge. So we're going to do this with some numbers. So again, the force of my 8 coulomb charge on my 2 coulomb charge is going to be to the right because it's going to repel my, because they will be, it will be repulsive. The force of the blue charge on the central charge is going to also be to the right because it is attractive. So when I calculate my net force, my net force is going to equal F1 plus F2, because both of these two charges are in the positive direction. From here, it's relatively straightforward. I mean, the math is a little ugly, but it's not so bad. So we have K times the charge, times my charge on the left, times my central charge, which I'm going to call QC divided by the distance between them squared, plus K times the charge to the right times the charge in the middle, divided by the distance between those two squared. And I'm going to use the colors here for the most part to differentiate between the two radii. Here I know they're the same. They won't always be in the questions I give you. So. Now let's go ahead and find the total charge. So K and Q and Q central, I can go ahead and pull out of my parentheses. So 8.99 times 10 to the ninth times two times 10 to the negative third. And you'll notice I've skipped my negative sign here. And that's because when I, I took care of my signs by taking a look at the directions in the beginning. So the sign of each charge is already incorporated down here in the directions of F1 and F2 when I 
and analyze things qualitatively before plugging in numbers. Continuing along, we're going to multiply these two values by q1 over r1 squared, so that's 8.0 times 10 to the negative third divided by 2.0 times 10 to the negative second squared plus 4.5 times 10 to the negative third divided by 2.0 times 10 to the negative second quantity squared again. Throwing all that in my calculator, I get that the net force on that central charge is 5.62 times 10 to the eighth, 5.62 times 10 to the eighth power. And there you have it. So the other kind of question I might ask you is a little bit more difficult. Um, so in this question, example two, I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out at what point the electric field is zero newtons per coulomb. So let's take a moment to think. So I know that the, the pole, the electric field, due to my negative charge in between in that central area, is going to be to the left. Because if I put a positive charge to the right of the negative charge, the negative charge is going to pull it to the left. And I know that the direction of the field due to the positive charge is also going to be to the left because the positive charge is going to push that, um, that, that charge away. To the right of the positive charge, the direction of the negative charge will be to the left still, because it'll be attractive, but to the, due to the positive charge, the direction of the field will be to the right. Similarly, the direction of the field due to the negative charge on the right will be to the right, or on the, sorry, on the far left over here in this space that's kind of off to the edge of the screen. And that that blue charge is going to repel anything over there. So the direction of its field will be leftwards. So here what I've done is I have said, I have shown myself that whatever the net electric field is zero, it's definitely not between these two charges. My next step is to take a look at the magnitude of each charge. So my first charge has a magnitude of eight micro millicoulombs, and my second one has a charge of 4.5 millicoulombs. As a result, I know that the electrostatic force, or that, the, that the electrostatic force is going to be zero when I am closer to my blue charge than my red one. So what that means is that it is over here. This is the region where my electric field can be zero. Now, the reason I need to be closer to that blue charge than that red charge is that the, elect the magnitude of the electrostatic force is dependent on the magnitude of the, magnitude of the charge. So what that means is if, I am, if my charge is larger, my field is larger. So in order to have my charges, my fields balance out, I need to be farther from, a big, from the bigger charge than from the smaller one. So with that, let's go ahead and figure out where my electrostatic field is zero. My, net, my, my electric field is zero. So my net electric field to the right is going to equal the field due to the charge that the blue charge minus the field due to the red charge. So zero is equal to FB minus FR. The field due to the blue charge is rather straightforward, right? It's K times the, char the blue charge, so Q blue, divided by the distance from the blue charge to the mystery spot squared. For the red charge, however, K and Q are just the same, but the distance to that red that or that distance, um, the distance from the red charge to that spot is going to equal R plus two centimeters squared because the red charge is two centimeters farther away from the point to the right of the blue charge than the blue charge is because we are two centimeters this way. So let's go ahead and expand and simplify. So K times QB, or excuse me, sorry, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to, before I get here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, so K times Q blue times R squared must be equal to K times QR times R plus two centimeters squared. So my Ks will cancel out and I can go ahead and simplify my equation a little bit. So QB over R squared is equal to QR divided by R squared plus 
And instead of uh, writing 2 times 10 to the negative 2, I'm just going to write 0 0.02 here. So r squared plus 0 0.04 times r plus 0 0.04. Oh, excuse me. I'm missing a couple zeros here. It's actually going to be 4 times 10 to the negative 4. So let me go ahead and fix that. And what I got, I got this by foiling my parentheses over here. So r times r plus 0 0.02 times r plus 0 0.02 times r plus 0 0.02 times 0 0.02. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So I get qb times r squared plus 0 0.04 times qb times r. Actually, let me go ahead. I'm going to pause myself back up a, step, a stage. And so what I'm going to say is qb times r squared plus 0.04r plus 4 times 10 to the negative fourth is equal to qr times r squared. So what this becomes is qb times r squared minus qr times r squared plus 0.04 times qb times r plus qb times 4 times 10 to the negative fourth equals 0. Because what I've done is I've, I'm setting everything equal to 0. What I can do from here, I can plug my numbers in, I can simplify. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually graph everything in my graphing calculator and have my, my calculator find the intercepts. That's option 1. Option 2 would instead be, would be to use the quadratic formula. So x, which is r, equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. So let's simplify, and then we'll talk about how we'd plug everything into the quadratic formula. So qb is negative, is 8 times 10 to the negative third, which again, we're ignoring the um, sign because we've already taken into account when we did our qualitative discussion earlier and determined that my uh, position had to be to the right of the blue charge. Um, so that's 8 times 10 to the negative 3 times r squared minus 4.5 times 10 to the negative 3 times r squared plus 0 0.04 times 8 times 10 to the negative 3 times r plus 8 times 10 to the negative 3 times 4 times 10 to the negative 4 squared equals 0. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these like terms. So instead of, so this is going to become um, 12.5, or sorry, um, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 3 times r squared. Um, similarly, I could have, I could simplify this. I'm not going to do it right now, but I could. And I could simplify my term to the right. Instead, I'm going to just go ahead and plug in the numbers I got in my calculator. So I've gone ahead and simplified my equation um, and written the simplified equation up at the top of the screen. Feel free to do the simplification yourself, double check to make sure I did it right. And if you're unsure how I did this, feel free to come and check in with me during class. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and identify A, which is whatever is multiplying R squared, B, which is whatever is multiplying R, and C, which is whatever is um, left as a constant by itself. I am going to plug these into my quadratic formula. So r is equal to negative b, so negative 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 3.2 times 10 to the negative fourth squared, minus 4 times 3.5 times 10 to the negative third, times 3.2 times 10 to the negative sixth, all over 2a. 2 times 3.5 times 10 to the negative third. And again, this is a matter of just shoving everything in the calculator. Um, one note, we will know that this problem works as long as one of my values for r is positive. Um, I will tell you, I did not write this. When I wrote this question, I, didn't, I, did not I did not double check it before I made this video. And so the value that you get for r is negative 0.01 or a larger negative number. So as we know that this question doesn't actually work, so the right answer would actually be nowhere. But what matters more than the actual answer is the process. 
Um, so that is the finding the net force equation. And then mathematically doing the ugly work that goes into solving for R. Now, my recommendation is, of course, to instead of using a quadratic formula, stick this equation in your calculator um, under y equals. And then when you have a graph, you can hit, um, you can go to your graph and then you can hit um, second and the trace button, which takes you to the calculation spot. And you can select two, which is your zero. And you can actually select where, so you can actually use your calculator to find the, the um, intercepts. Those intercepts, um, those x-intercepts are where um, our values for r that we're looking for for this question are. Um, so with that, you have seen the worst question that I, could ask, that I can ask you on this. And so I think we're ready to go ahead and move to takeaways. So first, to find the net electric force or field, find the sum of each individual electric force or field. And the direction of an electric field is the direction a positive charge would move if placed in that field. So that is, those are the key takeaways for this video. Um, it is now your turn to solve some advanced questions on your own. Best of luck and happy solving.